What's up guys, it's Will from the Ready Duelist bringing you guys a new updated version of Harpies to combat the current game right now. So if you really think about the game currently, you know, outside of the Rogue and outside of, you know, the Casual, um, a lot of the decks are pretty much, you know, the Sky Strikers, the Gokis, uh, you still have some Pendulum Magician as well as some True Draco left, um, and then some Invoked and some Paleo, to where... To be honest, out of all the Legacy decks, I would honestly argue that Harpies, Harpies, out of all the Legacy decks, Blue Eyes, Dark Magician, you know, BLS, blah, 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 Harpies actually have the best chance. Not necessarily that they're actually well-equipped to take on these decks, but they have a decent matchup against a lot of those decks. Um, particularly because they can run cards that are going to take out those decks, or at least stun those decks big time. And they can run hand traps without really slowing down their engine. So we'll go ahead and get into the deck profile, and I'll explain to you guys on how this deck is not necessarily like meta, but like in terms of if you were to face the meta and stuff like that, not a bad option. So first of all, new change I made with the deck is one Harpy's Pet Dragon. Um, now granted, before the existence of the Galaxy Tomahawk combo, which I'll describe to you guys, and there's also replays at the end of this video to help you guys... Uh, um, see how it all works. I didn't like Harpy's Pet Dragon in Harpy's because I felt that the rank 7s that existed at the time were just, I felt like a pure rank 4 Harpy's was better. Um, I felt like you're going to draw the Harpy's Pet Dragon, it's going to be a dead draw and stuff like that. But to be honest, ever since the exist, uh, the creation of Galaxy Tomahawk and Lynx and basically stuff like that, you can pretty much use Harpy Chandler uh, to summon Pet Dragon from the deck. And when she does so, he become, she becomes level 7 because of the dragon on the field. Um, and when you do that, you can go into Galaxy Tomahawk, which basically lets you be, make a 1-card Borload or a 1-card Saryuja just from that combo. So it's Or I guess a 2-card. So it's pretty good. Um, it enables you to uh, use the Saryuja effect to draw into you know 4 cards into your deck and rearrange your hand to where we can talk about how that combo will be very, very good for you. Um, so yeah. Alright, so Harpy Queen, 3 of them. Um, she not only is a 1900 body, but she searches out your, uh, Harpy's Hunting Ground. I think you only need one Harpy's Hunting Ground. I know a lot of people like running two, but to be honest, uh, most of the time you don't really need two. You just kind of need one, and the Harpy's Queen, I, I promise, you don't need two. Harpy's Queen searches it out for you, so you already have four targets in your entire deck, uh, to find a card. Now, there's also Harpy Harpist, a really good card in terms of, making your resources and like recycling Harpy Channeler because during the end phase if it was sent to the graveyard you can add one level four or lower wing beast type monster with 1500 attack or less from your deck to your hand so basically you add Harpy Channeler use Harpy Channeler effect to basically recycle the combos I'm pretty sure most Harpy players are um, familiar with that combo so unless they're not uh, you should know that Harpy Channeler can discard any Harpy card um, basically special summon any Harpy from the deck. So that can be a level 4. Most of the time it's Harpy Harpist because when you uh, when Harpy Harpist goes to the graveyard for an XC summon or something like that, um, you can ba basically add another channeler from your deck to your hand. So you can keep recycling that play. Uh, but you can also go for Pet Dragon. Uh, so sometimes in your first turn, uh, depending on what your hand is, if you have a lot of good floodgates and stuff like that and you think you're going to be able to set up really well, you can uh, summon Harpy Channeler summon queen, uh, pet dragon from the deck, go into number 42, and then, you know, draw four cards and set up with that. Or if you don't necessarily have a lot of defense in the back row and stuff like that, you can use um, Harpy Channeler to summon Harpy Harpist from the deck and go into Baguska. Baguska is still a really good first turn option for defense. Three of the Harpy Lady 1. There's Harpy Lady 2 and Harpy Lady 3, Although their effects really aren't that great for right now. Maybe if Shadals were a thing again, you'd want to use them again. But um, Harpy Lady 1 at least gives the boosts um, for all the other uh, Harpies. And on top of that, um, she's always considered Harpy Lady. So she's the only one you can summon off of Elegant Egotist. Two of the Harpy Dancer, not three. Um, I don't run Divine Wisp Miss Valley in this deck because I'm running Anti-Spell. So um, you really only need two of her, and she's really good for just going at and popping value back row. Like I said, um, decks like Blue Eyes and decks like, you know, BLS and other legacy decks really can't run that many hand traps, and the reason why is because they need, like, three cards to be able to set up. But to be honest, in Harpies, um, 
you really only have three play setups. You have Harpy Channeler, you have Elegant Egotist, and you have Hysteric Party. Um, so otherwise, you really don't need, I mean, unless you're running Instant Fusion for other, like, easy rank fours, but I don't really choose to run Instant Fusion and Harpies anymore because Norton's banned. Um, you really don't have any other plays in terms of getting those monsters out unless you're running, like, generic, like, you know, Goblin Berg or, you know, Photon Thresh or something like that, so... Um, I personally have taken those monsters out for hand traps. The hand traps are very necessary. I think that the ability of your deck to de run, be able to run hand traps kind of defines how good it's going to be. Uh, so I do run the three Ash Blossom. I do run two Ghost Ogre um, for the deck. Um, yeah, so. Next, one Elegant Egotist. You only need one. Some pe I see some deck profiles really like running multiple. Uh, but to be honest, um, Hysteric Sign recycles it from your deck and your graveyard. So essentially, you can think of Hysteric Sign as four copies, three copies at the top of another one. So you really don't need two Elegant Egotists. You have basically four copies in your deck if you're running Hysteric Sign. So it's not even once per turn. So you can activate Elegant Egotist, activate this, add it back from your hand, from your graveyard, activate it again, and you already have three Harpies on board. Like I said, only one Hunting Ground, really good for popping back row, and really also be able to good to pop your own stuff. Sometimes you need to get rid of your own anti-spell, although I really wouldn't advise that. But you also can pop your own Hysteric Sign to get the Search at the End Phase. And the Search at the End Phase is crazy because you can add any three Harpy cards from your deck to your hand. So you can add Harpy Channeler, Harpy Harpist, Harpy's Feather Storm, which we're going to talk about. Um, any three Harpies from your deck to your hand at the end phase, it's just crazy. It's, it's crazy insane. Sometimes you can go plus two on your first turn because of that. Two Torrential Tribute. So um, one thing that I had difficulties when it came to this deck was when my opponent already establishes a board, like I didn't open with the hand trap and they establish a board, Harpies have a difficult time breaking boards because they, like I said, they only really have Harpy Channeler and Elegant Egotist to go quote, quote, off. So I needed some cards that were going to be able to board wipe, but I didn't want them to be spells because sometimes I would have anti-spell and it wouldn't really necessarily help me. So I do decide to do the two Torrential Tribute, which is working out pretty well. Um, the only time I find this card not working out the way I'd want it to is when I set up a board and I have Torrential Tribute as a trap as opposed to like Solemn or something like that because I don't want to destroy my own board. Uh, but yeah, so next, three Harpies, Featherstorm, super good card. Uh, basically, um, you can activate it from your hand if you control a Harpy monster, um, but it has to be a Wing Wing Beast type, so it can't be Harpy's Pet Phantasma Dragon or just Pet Dragon. It has to be a Wing Wing Beast type Harpy monster. But basically what it does is it shuts off monster effects for an entire turn, only your opponents. So... Um, the reason why Harpies, I think, are another deck that can be good for combating the current decks is because they don't need a run called Call by the Grave. They have their own version of Call by the Grave in Harpies Feather Swarm, but this is also basically just, um, a chalice. You know, it's basically, it's this, this card shuts off hand traps, it shuts off monster effects on the field, monster effects in the graveyard, everywhere. Harpy's Feather Storm shuts that off. So let's say you're going first, you summon Channeler, you discard a Harpy to special summon from the deck, they drop Ash on you, or they drop Ghost Ogre on you. You can activate this from your hand to turn that off. So you don't have to you literally don't have to fear hand traps for the entire turn when you activate this card, which is really good. And but on top of that, let's say they have a Crystal Wing on board, and you ha you have the ability to make Castell or Utopia the Lightning or something like that. You summon Harpy Channeler, activate effect, they're gonna try to chain Crystal Wing. Activate this, Crystal Wing's negated, everything's negated, even hand traps for the entire turn. Really good. Um, we're going to talk about how this, this deck can shut off spells and monster effects for an entire turn with Anti-Spell and with Harpy's Feather Storm, which really is good in combating the current meta. Next, three Anti-Spell Fragrance. Um, when you think about the current decks that are good now, Goki, you know, they have Goki Rematch. Uh, you, you know, Pendulums, they have to be able to play their scales. And Sky Strikers, their entire deck is based off the of spells. When you have the ability to take out, take away their spells with anti-spell fragrance, they have to set them for a turn. They don't have they, like they have like one or two quick plays, and they have to otherwise they have to set their stuff. Um, then during their turn, you can activate Harpy's Hunting Ground and summon your Harpies and pop all of their spells. And so this combined with Harpy's Feather Storm, they de they get no monster effects for an entire turn. They get no spells for an entire turn, and you have the ability during your next turn to summon your Harpies and take out their spells without them being able to ever use them, which is really good. 
Three Hysteric Party, really, really good late game. You don't want to necessarily draw it too early um, because basically you just get discard one card, special summon all copies of Harpy Lady, uh, which what they all count as on the field in the graveyard. And uh, the card you want to discard, honestly, is either Harpy Harpist to get the end phase effect or the, uh, oops, gosh, what's going on? Um, Hysteric Sign to get the end phase effect. Uh, and then two strike, one judgment, and one warning for the traps as well. Uh, because like I said, with Saryuja, which we'll get into the combo, um, you're going to be able to set up a lot on your first turn to take out their spells, to take out their monster effects, but it also helps perhaps negate some summons. Alright, so next we go into one Galaxy Tomahawk, the only rank seven you're going to be running in this deck. Um, basically this is used for Harpy Channeler and Harpy uh, Pet Dragon to go into Galaxy Tomahawk. With Galaxy Tomahawk, he summons a bunch of tokens, which enables you to link summon into Spider, uh, Genius, and Proxy to go into Saryuja or Boralode. So I like to go into Saryuja on my first turn because it enables me to draw a bunch of cards. Let's say I I draw um, you know Anti Spell and I draw Feather Storm, or I have a way of popping Hysteric Sign. I then use Effect to Special Summon Harpy from my hand. Uh, then I can basically set my Anti Spell. I can get my end phase effect to search this card out, and then instantly during my opponent's next turn, they have to play through. They can play through no spells, and they have to play through you know no monster effects, which is really good. And sometimes that's all it takes. That's all it takes to shut them off for an entire turn of Yu-Gi-Oh. Utopia Lightning, Utopia uh, Tornado Dragon, also good for popping your own Hysteric Sign. Baguska, still a super good generic rank four. Um, like I said, like if you don't open with a lot of back uh, back row. You can use Channeler Effect to Special Summon uh, Harpist from the deck and go into Baguska. Three Pet Phantasmal, I mean one pen Pet Phantasmal Dragon. This card has become so obsolete that nobody knows what it does anymore. <laughs> like, I've won duels with this card because they go into battle phase thinking they can attack it, and they can't attack it, and they can't target it. So, like, basically, I remember one time I, I was like, I was basically, I should have lost a duel. And um, I summoned this, and I won because I inflicted 4,000 direct damage. Uh, also, another underrated card, Zero Fine, Harpies are tailor-made to make it. Castell, Lightning Chidori, also another great rating for um, that the Harpies are tailor-made to make. And uh, we also have Abyss Dweller. Boralode, I might take him out because once you use Saryuja, it's very hard to make Boralode after that because all the Harpies become Harpy Lady on the field. So basically, it says 3 plus effect monsters, um, which is not necessarily super difficult to do, but kind of hard to do sometimes, but uh, yeah. I might just replace it with a generic Landfill Links uh, because Landfill Links is an easy rank 2 to make and honestly you just want to be able to use your rank 4s and Harpies as much as possible. But yeah, so that's the deck profile guys. Hope you guys enjoy the replays and uh, we'll see you on the next video.